Hey guys, welcome to episode two of the Swole and Busy podcast. Today we are going to be talking about how to put on muscle as a skinny guy. Because, you know, I was once one of them, so I feel your pain, guys. It's it's a tough slope, you know? You know, you're, you're burning muscle. I mean, I feel like when I was skinny, I felt like the hardest thing was, you know, gaining weight and, like, finding out a workout routine that actually gave me results. So today we're going to be covering just some of those things that hopefully will help you guys out. So first off, I just want to talk about, you know, some, some tips and strategies for overcoming those challenges when it comes to muscle building goals. Now, first off, I want to talk a lot about um, – diet and training now i made this mistake a lot when i first started training and that is doing the wrong kind of training you know i feel like when we're like going through school and stuff and like when we're like on your own uh teams you always see like you know we got to lift heavy weight like the, the what's the saying you got to lift big to get big and guys the truth is that saying is literally not accurate at all I mean, I, I'm sure it has some correlation to the truth, but I think when you're looking at this from like an expert perspective of like actually getting results, I don't think it is. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, obviously you have, you know, specimens like Ronnie Coleman, you know, lifting huge weight and literally this guy's massive, but obviously he's not natural. Anyhow, but the reason why I say that is because, so there's two kinds of hypertrophy. There's called uh, myofibular, I believe I'm pronouncing that right. And there's sacroplasmic, basically the myof- myofibular, that is the slow twitch muscle fiber. So slow twitch is like, well, not slow twitch, but that's the power muscle f- that fiber. So when you're doing things like, you know, heavy deadlifts, heavy squats, um, heavy bench press, that's that's the kind of hypertrophy you, you're using. But what we want to do is we want to train for sacroplasmic. What this is, is it's what bodybuilders use. So when we're using, when we're training in like, you know, the higher rep ranges from like 15 to 20, what we're actually doing is that gives you the pump-like feeling. So basically what happens is when you're putting a whole bunch of blood flow and you're isolating the muscle, that actually grows the muscle faster than if you're just actually becoming stronger. So the word M word, that's for strength. The M, uh, myofibular hypertrophy, that's for strength. And sarcoplasmic is for, um, like, getting actual results. So what this means is if you want to become strong and look good, we need to have a mix of both. It's uh, called power building. It's like bodybuilding and powerlifting had a baby. You can do that, you'll be strong, and you'll look like you're strong. But for when it comes to you skinny guys, if you guys are just really your only focus is, you know, putting on mass quickly, what we need to be doing is we need to be training in high rep ranges. Actually, in the show notes, if you go down below, there's going to be a free program. Just tap on that. It was particularly, it was specifically meant for skinny guys. Anybody could use it though, but that's going to give you a perfect uh, baseline for you know having effective training. Personally, I've been training for almost a decade now, and I use it, and it, it's perfect. It gives me results, so it does work. But what's even more important than training is our nutrition because our, our nutrition is going to help us keep up with our fast metabolism you know as you know as a skinny guy it, it feels like every time you eat you just burn it right off and it's actually not that you're burning it right off but it's actually that you're not eating enough now obviously we burn calories throughout the day and whenever we work out we are burning calories like you burn more calories from lifting weights than you do from doing cardio for 10 minutes or 30 minutes there's that's a whole different episode i'll talk about that at a different time but anyways, when it comes to nutrition, guys, the only way, the true way to put on muscle mass, especially as someone that's skinny, what you need to do is you need to be focusing on gaining weight. You're like, obviously, Aaron, I know that. But the thing is how you do it. So there's this thing, uh, if I remember to put it in the show notes, I will. But there's this thing called a TDEE calculator. Basically, what the TDE calculator is, is it's a calculator that calculates how many calories you uh, you need. So basically, what the TDE calculator stands for is it stands for your totally your total daily energy expenditure. So basically, all you do is you go on this calculator, right? You type in your age, you type in your age, weight, and height, and like your activity level and your body fat if you know it. And based from there, what's going to do is it's going to break down exactly what you need to do to get the certain uh, physical results that you want. For example, for me, I weigh 160 pounds, and I'm like 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, uh, my body fat, I believe, is 12%. And then you go in there, and you say your activity. So we'll just say moderate exercise three to five days a week. So it says for me, I need 2,700 calories per day. So what this means is, like for example, when I was bulking, all you do is, to put on muscle, you increase your uh, daily maintenance by 300 if you want to lose weight you lower it by 300 if you want to get results faster 
the extremes of this, I would say go no higher than an additional 500 calories or less than 500 calories because you want to be careful because you can do some. I, my one friend, just so you guys explain, my one friend, uh, he didn't know anything about bulking. I told him, like, I'm like, dude, you're going to end up killing yourself, man. I, I don't remember what he did. I think he went above his calories from like 700, 500. I wouldn't suggest going up that high. But basically what happens is at this point, he was really force feeding. He was really force feeding himself. So he literally had to go, I'm not exaggerating, he had to go to the hospital and like, I think they had to like, I can't remember exactly what they had to do. They didn't have to pump his stomach, but they had to do something where they literally had to remove it. I don't remember exactly what happened, but I remember something crazy. I was like, dude, oh my God, are you okay? I can't remember. I think like, it was something weird though. But basically he was so sick because he was overeating. Like his body was struggling to digest the food. I don't remember the exact details. I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. I'm not a doctor, but... I don't remember, but I only know it was bad. So, guys, my, my, just make a point. Don't go above 300 and don't go below 300. But when it comes to gaining weight, you always want to go above 300, right? So, yeah, all you do is go on the TDE calculator. Now, when it comes to actually getting this nutrition, what I would suggest is I used to have this this shake. Literally, it was like a 700-calorie shake, a 1,000-calorie shake. It was amazing because I feel when it comes to bulking, breakfast is the most valuable meal of the day because it's really easy to eat a lot towards breakfast and you're going to pretty much be full for the rest of the day so you don't have to eat nearly as much. So basically what you do is, this is a shake. I would suggest like, you know, things that are really um, rich in proteins. So for example, uh, I would say anything like oatmeal, eggs, stuff like that, toast. That's Toast is higher in calorie, but uh, ideally you want to try to get as roughly as much protein as there is to your body weight. You want to go a little bit over. It's like 1.2 times body weight, and that will give you roughly how much protein you need. There's really no um, clear range. I believe the health the health department, they said something like 1.4 grams of protein per pound. Or to gain muscle, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something like that. But the general understanding is you need to have a minimum of one pound. Uh, I mean, you need to have a minimum of one gram per pound of uh, protein. So, for example, for me, I weigh 160 pounds, so I'm going to have a minimum of 160 grams of protein per day So, in order to gain muscle. If you go above that, it's not going to kill you. Personally, I think it's better to go above than below. Personally, I, I usually eat around 170 to 180. It's better too, more, too much than not enough. Now, anyways, when it comes back to the shake, so this is what I would have every single morning. It was a 1,000-calorie shake, about 1,000 calories. So, what you do is I would have my, my whey protein. That was a 160 calories, I believe. So, I have my protein for 160. Then I would have my two cups of milk so that'll be 80 plus 80 so 160 that was at 320 then i'll put half a cup of oatmeal in there i think that put me at like another like 150 and then from there i'll put peanut butter in there yeah so that would put me at about 600 650 that was roughly how much the shake was the shake was 650 calories and then from there where you get your other thing is you have i would have muffins so i would have like these two muffins you cut them in half and you put peanut butter in them so each muffin was like uh, or like raisin bagels and each of the bagels were like 200 calories. And then with the peanut butter, you were getting like a thousand calorie breakfast. You eat that, you just feel completely full. But the trick is, it's easy to drink the drink. So what you do is you eat the food first, then you drink the shake and you feel like you're like, oh my God, I don't think I can eat anything else. But once you do that though, you're set for the rest of the day. You know, you're having your thousand calories and from there you have your lunch. Your lunch might be like you know, 600, 500, you know, and then you just do that throughout the day. And when it comes to the um, snacks, you always wanna be snacking when you're bulking, but things are high in protein. You know, like, for example, if you're going to have, like, a snack, it could be something like eggs or nuts, like, literally, or a protein shake. But personally, for me, I was sick and tired of drinking protein shakes, but lots of times, I would just figure out a way to get it in. You have a protein shake in the morning, protein shake at night, just because it's easy. However, protein is very expensive, so if you're going to do that, just be aware of the cost. When you really want to focus, when it comes to, like, uh, weight training, I really suggest doing anything within the 15 to 20 rep range. Uh, I would say 12 at the lowest, but it should be, like, if you're going to also drop sets are great that's what a drop set is if you guys don't know it's so let's for example let's say you're doing you know uh bicep curls that's an exercise i feel like we all know of you, you know you're doing bicep curls you're doing it with 20 dumbbells you know right as soon as you get to the 20 mark and you feel like you're about to fail you drop the dumbbells you go down to 15. you do another set of 20 reps you feel like you're gonna fail you drop away going on the 10. that will actually that's personally for me, I didn't start to see like real results until I started adding drop sets, drop sets into my uh, routine. Because for me, I haven't trained so long that like literally in workouts, I, I'm training like 40 sets. I mean, I'll have 10 exercises, four sets of each exercise. So about 40 sets per week I'm hitting of every single part. And personally, what works for me, what works the best is the bro split. The bro split is king. I go in there for like 45 minutes to an hour. I'm out of the gym. I take minute rest breaks. And I'm like, it's my, it works for me. I feel like the, one of the most important things is that we never talk about 
is if you guys listen to the last episode, we actually talked all about I actually talked all about consistency, but consistency is so important and like you know just staying disciplined because the most important thing to building muscle is simply just doing it regularly, guys. Like, don't beat yourself up if you don't go to the gym every day. Because I'm telling you, as long as you train, if you train for at least a week, you, you train one day a week, you do that forever, you're going to be somewhere. Like, you're going to have some muscle. It's just that how fast you want to speed up the process. We all know that like, the higher intensity and the more you break down your muscles, the faster you're going to have, the more you're going to recover, and obviously the more recovery you're going to have, the stronger you're going to become. But as long as you don't quit, that's all that matters. So if even if there's like one week you go to the gym four days a week, the next week you you only go once. And instead of beating yourself up, you'd be like, okay, I went to the gym one day a week, and when I went, I really didn't want to go. You know, I'm really busy right now with school and work, but I still made time for the gym. Pat yourself on the back, guys. Like, be proud of yourself. You stay consistent. That's all that matters. And then next week, just try to push yourself. I'm like, okay. Last week I only only went once a week. It was really hard for me to find time, but now I'm gonna try to go twice. Guys, you just you gotta stay consistent. That's all that matters. And actually, just real quick, funny story. I, I don't think he listens to the show, but I got this one buddy. His name is Jackson. Great guy, right? Jackson, I would say he's kind of a skinny guy. He was about six foot. I don't know, maybe like he was probably like one seventy, somewhere somewhere around there. You know, he just started he started training consistently. So he's basically, I just told him some basic stuff. I'm like, dude, just going to calorie surplus, and you know, just go to the gym every day, work out. You know, he does a great job when it comes to that. I don't know how his dieting is, but I do know that he's going to the gym, like, I don't know, like, four days a week. And whenever he does, he's weight training. Jackson probably went for me, like, 170 to, like, I don't know how much he weighs now, but I'm saying he's got to be at least, like, 176, 178, somewhere around there. But my point is, before, like, he his shirts, like, you know how you have your sleeves, like, there's, like, space in the shirts? I remember he used to have space in the shirts, and now he has none because his arm literally fills it in. And I just think that's so cool to see. Because simply just by, you know, eating more, and I don't even, just simply by eating more, and just going to the gym more, like, his his body, you can literally notice it. Like, you can literally see his shoulders, like, in his, like, whenever he has a shirt on, you can, like, see the shape of his shoulder. That was never there before. And I just find that so interesting, because I'm like, literally, all he did, like, he's not even, like, a, like some fitness master. He's just, like, literally doing, like, just basic exercises. I think he's doing, like, four exercises. I'm not sure what he's doing, but point is, he only goes to the gym four days a week. He eats a little bit more, and he literally does everything he loves. He plays volleyball, you know, all this other stuff. But he's still, like, you know, growing, like, his body. And I just think that's so funny because who knows if it actually is the dieting or if it actually is the fitness. I'm sure it's everything coming together. But the point is, he stayed consistent, and that is why he got what he wanted. So the simplest thing to say, guys, I said simple, not easy. But if you guys really want to change your body, you just need to simply do something. Try to do something forever. Because you just got to ask yourself honest questions. You're like, if I went to the gym one day a week for 10 years, would I still look how I do? Would I still look the way I do now? And I feel like for most of you, the answer would probably be no. So as long as you answer no, and you're feeling um, like frustrated, you got to remember this. If I continue to train like this for however long, will, it, will I see the return on my, of uh, my investment? for all my time and i feel like for most of you the answer will be yes especially if you're listening to this you guys are gonna learn a ton about you know how to organize workouts the best exercises how to make your workouts shorter and much more so i hope you guys enjoy this episode and i hope it provided you guys with some value uh you know thank you guys so much for listening to this episode if you guys found this helpful hit the follow button i'm gonna start posting out uh, more content because i, I just want to double down on this because you know this is what i truly love you know my main business that pays the bills yeah it's fun but it doesn't it's not love this is this is love i could do this for free so yeah thank you guys for your time and have a good one